Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your faces back to yet another BNR Project tutorial. Today we are bringing your scene transitions a little bit of spice, a little bit of extra flair by transforming them from basic fade transitions to stinger transitions. If you haven't set up a Streamlabs desktop yet or need a quick reminder or refresher on how to use it and the best settings to use, make sure to check the video linked above for a setup guide on Streamlabs desktop. There's a lot of different places where you can get some overlays as well as some stinger transitions usually. Some are paid, some are for free. Some examples are Stream Elements Store, the Streamlabs Store, on the Elgato Marketplace, on Nerd or Die, or on Owned. There's also a lot of resources out there for you to create your very own Stinger transition on After Effects. I have created a template on After Effects that allows you to change a couple of colors and uh, the logo that's used, and you'll be able to download that on the link in the description below. It'll take you to a Google Drive or a Notion page where you can download the files. On that same link, there are three pre-generated Stinger transitions with either the Twitch logo, the YouTube logo, or the Facebook gaming logo, if you want to use one of those per chance. They're there for you to use. They're free. Have fun. You don't need to have expert knowledge on video editing or anything like that to be able to use this motion graphic. And I'll be able to guide you in every step of the way in this tutorial. If you already have your own Stinger transition, you can skip ahead to the timestamp right here, which uh, goes directly to when we import it into Streamlabs desktop. I do plan on making this very same tutorial in the near future for DaVinci Resolve, which is a free to use editing software. So stay tuned for that and subscribe to make sure you don't miss that one. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to start up Premiere Pro and start up a new project. Here we are in a brand new project ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and create a new sequence. So you can right click under the project bin, select new item, sequence. I have some pre-made custom templates for vertical videos and for YouTube, but for the sake of this video, uh, it's under HD 1080p. You can select the highest frame rate there. That's usually what I use because I stream in 60 FPS, but if you stream in 30 FPS, then you would choose something that's closer to that. Uh, we can name it whatever we want. So in my case, I'm going to name it Singer. Alrighty then. Then for the next step, we're going to want to go into this little icon in the bottom right of your Essential Graphics tab. If you don't have the Essential Graphics tab, you can go under the Window tab and select Essential Graphics. It should open up a little window somewhere in one of these little hidden gems of uh, Premiere Pro. But once you find it, you want to select Essential Graphics. The bottom right, there's a little square with a plus icon that allows you to install a motion graphic template. So we're going to go ahead and find the location where we downloaded the file. Mine's right over here, Basic Stinger Mogurt. So once I open that up, it should import it in. If you can't find it, you can always look for it. You look for the word Stinger, you'll find it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select that, drag and drop it into the timeline. Uh, we can keep the existing settings or change them doesn't really matter in my case because 59.94 frames per second is very close and once everything is loaded in we'll be able to edit our motion graphic so i'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the timeline here just so that we're able to scrub through the footage so you can see the default setting that's set the default logo and colors that are set you can preview what the train transition really looks like if you haven't seen it yet. So now let's change the logo that's used and the colors as well because they don't really match my aesthetic of my stream. So for the do that, we're going to be selecting the layer of the basic stinger on the timeline. That should open up the edit tab on the uh, layer itself or on the graphic itself. So you'll have three color pickers, one for a bar. Uh, another one for the inner bar, so the black one you can't really see because there's no background image, but there is a black bar there. Uh, there's a red bar, and there's the background color of the where the logo is sitting on. And obviously there's a, the logo as well that you can change. So uh, you can either drag and drop your file onto this little square here where the logo currently is, or you can click on the three lines and replace from Explorer, which is what I'll be doing. Uh, I have the BNR project logo here, but you can obviously put any emote, logo, whatever your heart content, really, uh, as long as there is a transparent background. You can also put something with a background as long as you change your background color to the same color of the background of the image that you have. Uh, you can even do multiple different little stingers for changing in between specific scenes so you can have all your emotes show up. If that's something that you're into or you would like to do, there's an idea. So I'm going to go ahead and select the BNR project logo. We're going to go ahead and resize it over here in the bottom. I can select uh, a specific height and width. 
Uh, I believe 200 is more or less a good size. You can always fiddle around with the size and the height here and preview it to see what it looks like. This looks about right for me. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to let that at 200% with the logo there. We're going to go ahead and uh, change the colors now that are used for the background. Uh, so what you can do is you can click on the little square next to where whichever color you want to change. You can manually set it if you know the uh, RGB, your hex code, whichever code you want to use. Uh, you can obviously input it here. Uh, if you just want to pick colors out of the image, you can use the eyedropper tool, which is what I'll be doing to set the background color, for instance. I'm going to use the same kind of background that's behind the uh, logo itself. So it should look something like that. So once you're happy with the color, you can click on OK and it should update and that'll be great and dandy. Otherwise, we're going to change the uh, bar. So the bar one color is going to be the outside bar. You can't really see it because it's on black right now. But if I were to set it on white, the little white that we use in the VR project logo and click on OK, we'll be able to see that there's a white bar not only at the uh, very start of the animation, but also at the very end of the animation. And then we're going to change the bar to color. I'm going to choose a nice blue that we use on the logo itself and voila. Now you have something that follows the color scheme of your brand. It's nice. It's perfect. It's visual. The black that you guys see in the preview isn't actually going to show up as black. It's going to show up as uh, whatever stream or whatever scene is happening underneath. And basically the scene changes uh, between scene A and scene B at this point when the graphic covers the whole screen so that whenever it swipes back again, the other scene should be appearing underneath. Uh, you can't really see on Premiere. It just looks like a black video and it doesn't look like there's anything underneath. But if I were to move the layer up and put some kind of image or whatever underneath, you'll see that it covers basically where the logo is and it doesn't show up as, you know, as, as a black video. It's actually transparent. Um, which is nice. It'll be, you'll be able to, to export this and it'll be a transparent background if we export it with the correct settings, which is where we are at now. So now we can preview what it looks like if we go back to the beginning and we play it, we're going to be able to see the whole transition. There's also a little sound effect that happens in the middle, which is nice. You don't need to add anything yourself if you don't want to. You can also not use that one if you don't want to. There's a way to disable the sound. If that, uh, if you can, you can mute it here, or you can mute it before you export, or you can mute it whatever, when, whenever you import it to uh, your streaming platform. So that always works as well. So now that we have our singer transition built and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and export it. To do so, we can go on the export tab. So I already have some presets, and obviously I have the preset as well for all my transparent motion graphics that I use usually on stream, whether it be for stringer transitions or for uh, graphics that I make myself. But for the sake of this video, obviously I'll show you guys how to do it. So under format, you would want to select QuickTime, which is somewhere around here. And then uh, under video, make sure that the video codec is set to Apple ProRes 4444. And then the rest, you can leave it to match the source or to match the scene settings. Everything else should be fine. Uh, here's the setting in case you wanted to include or not the audio of the uh, of the of the of the singer transition. So you're able to select it on or off. I'll keep mine on because I want it to play. Uh, then we're able to change where we wanted to render. So you can obviously click on the little link, choose whichever folder you want to save to. I'll save it right here and I'll name it basic BNR project singer. All right. And then all you have to do is click on export on the bottom right hand corner. And that should take for me a couple of seconds for you. It might take longer. It all depends on the strength of your computer, but it shouldn't take too long since it's a uh, a very short file. It's barely even two, it's not even two seconds. So it shouldn't take too long to render out. And as soon as you have it render, you should be able to see it uh, wherever you download it or wherever you rendered it. So mine would be right here. 
Now let's hop on Streamlabs Desktop and use our newly exported Stinger transition. We have a uh, Streamlabs Desktop opened up. We're gonna go ahead and click on the top right icon of our scenes panel over here, edit scene transition. And we can add a new transition by clicking on add transition. The type of transition is obviously a stinger. So we're gonna look for a stinger in this list over here and we can call it whatever we want. So I'm gonna call it BNR stinger. We can browse to wherever we exported the file. In my case, it's going to be in my downloads and it's called basic BNR stinger. For the transition point, we can put a thousand. I know for a fact that my stinger transition that we created was two seconds long. If you have your own stinger transition and you didn't follow along with the tutorial in the beginning, you should be able to see your transition point or time in the documentation of wherever you got the stinger transition from. If not, usually you wanna play around with this. You wanna set the transition points to being the timing when the stinger takes up the whole screen, switching between the first and the second scene. If you set this setting too low, then your scene will switch before the stinger shows up on the full screen. And if you set it too high, then it'll switch after your stinger has passed a bit. So usually you want to find a sweet spot right in the middle. In our case, I know it's a thousand milliseconds. As for the audio monitoring, if you set this to monitor off, basically stream will be able to hear any audio in the stinger transition, but you won't be able to hear it. If you set it to monitor only, you'll be able to hear it. And depending on how you have your monitoring settings, stream might also be able to hear it. And if you set it to monitor and output, it might play for both you and the stream, but in the same time, the stream might have an echo because your audio settings might not be set properly. So the best way to find out which one of these three settings to set it to, especially if you wanted to hear it, is to select one of them, like for instance, monitor only, to record a short clip, to listen back to that clip and make sure that not only you were able to hear it at first when you were recording the clip, but also if it shows up in the clip itself. So in my case, I know that the monitor, uh, the monitoring settings doesn't use the same speakers as I use for the stream output. So I'm going to select monitor and output. For the audio fade style, we're going to want to change this to crossfade. What this basically does is, for instance, if you're using uh, your mic in both scenes that you're switching to and from, it won't lower the volume of your microphone all the way down to zero and then raise it back up to whichever volume it was before. It'll just keep the same volume across or it'll crossfade from whichever volume is on one scene to another scene. And then for the last thing, we don't need to change it because we're exactly on the size that we need. We're going to go ahead and click on done when all the settings are done and selected. We're going to make sure that our default transition is set to the stinger by selecting it here on the left and then click on done. So if we try to change in between scenes, I'll be able to see that the new stinger transition is the one being used. And that ladies and gents is how you add a stinger transition to Streamlabs desktop. If you enjoyed this tutorial and it helped you out, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. You can also comment down if you have any questions or concerns about uh, anything I spoke about in this video. If you don't know me already, hi, my name is Coco. I am one of two content creators here on the BNR project. I also stream on Twitch every Sunday and Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. So go ahead and check us a follow there if you want. Check out the playlist linked above for more tips and tricks on how to bring your stream game better with Streamlabs Desktop. Subscribe if you haven't already for more tutorials like this one, gaming videos and vlogs from the BNR project and I'll catch you next time.